So ever since Apple debuted the original Apple Pencil alongside the 2015 iPad Pro, they've seemed to iterate on it every single year from both a software and a hardware standpoint, and now we're at the point where iPadOS 18 is right around the corner and we have a brand new Apple Pencil Pro. But over the years, we've gotten a bunch of new features, and what I want to do in this video is give you guys the best tips, tricks, and features of the Apple Pencil, whether it is a Gen 1 Apple Pencil or the brand new Apple Pencil Pro. And these features will get progressively better as the video goes on. Now, most of these features will work with iPad OS 17 and whether you have a Pencil Pro or the Apple Pencil 2 or the Gen 1 Apple Pencil, but I did save some iPadOS 18 and Apple Pencil Pro specific features to the very end, so be sure to follow along with the timestamps below. And then before we continue, be sure to subscribe to the channel as well as consider becoming a channel member to get some new awesome wallpapers for August as you see on the screen right now. But without further ado, let's talk about the Apple Pencil and just how awesome it is. So I do want to start off by saying I am using the brand new M4 iPad Pro with the new Pencil Pro down here, but the first 10 or 11 features that I'm going to mention can be used with any iPad that's up to date from an iPadOS standpoint, as well as any Apple Pencil, including the Apple Pencil Gen 1, the USB-C, and the Apple Pencil 2, because I wanted to make this as inclusive as possible, and like I mentioned, timestamps will be below. But the first trick or tip that I'm going to mention is going to be the Instant Note. So if your iPad is in this locked position and you have your Apple Pencil, if you just tap on the screen, it'll automatically bring you into a blank note for you to be able to jot something down. And I like this because you don't have to actually unlock your iPad, you don't have to find the notes application or anything like that. If you have a quick idea or you need to write something down quickly, you can just do this. And what is nice is technically anybody who has your iPad can access the instant note, but they're gonna be limited to this one specific note. If you wanna access all your notes, you tap on the top left corner and it's gonna ask for face ID or touch ID, and then you get into the actual notes application to access the rest of everything else. So that is gonna be the first one, the instant note from the lock screen. Now the next feature I wanna bring up is going to be live text and basically handwritten text recognition. As you can see here, I have some dummy names and dummy emails and phone numbers. You can see that stuff is underlined right here. So I hand wrote this with my own Apple Pencil. And actually, if you tap on here, it's gonna ask you, it's gonna recognize that it's a phone number and it'll ask you what you wanna do with that phone number. Do you wanna call it, send a message, FaceTime? And then similarly with other texts, like this email, if you tap on here, it's gonna take you directly to an email to reply in an email right away, which we'll touch on a little bit further. So I really like this feature because for instance, if you are in a pickle and maybe you're in a meeting and you need to write down an instant note, which is a time or an address or a phone number, you can just write it down reference it later and then obviously save it, add the email, send the email, write down this address, or even like I said before, write down some timing if you need to actually write down some timing and create an event. So live text and actual handwritten recognition is a great one. This next feature is going to be three finger gestures in order to actually have shortcuts enabled so you don't have to rely on things like the undo button over here and have to go through multiple steps. So for instance, if I'm going down here and I just write down hello or I draw a smiley face and I wanna actually undo that, I would have to press this back button over and over again and sometimes it's hidden. So if I move it down here, you can see that it's hidden and it's not visible. You have to tap on here, then press undo. But if you just grab three fingers and then swipe to the left, it'll start to undo everything that you were doing. And then same thing goes if you swipe to the right. If I swipe to the right, it'll begin to redo everything. And then another little tidbit is if you tap all three, it'll show up a little context menu, which allows you to undo, redo, as well as cut, copy, and paste. So a nice little trick to kind of make things a little bit easier and more efficient. So the next one is gonna be the double tap feature on the Apple Pencil 2 specifically, and double tap even though we do have the squeeze functionality on the Pencil Pro, still works with the Pencil Pro. Unfortunately, there's no double tap feature on the Gen 1 Apple Pencil, so take that into account, but for the double tap feature for me, I have a default set it to switching between my current tool and the erasers. So if I double tap on my Apple Pencil here, you can see that it switched from the tool to the eraser. And you notice that even though I have my paper like grip on here, it still recognizes the double tap. So if I do it again, it'll go back to the pen, do it again, it'll go back to the eraser. And you do have some customization. So if I go into my settings, go to the Apple Pencil settings, you go to this actual double tap, you have a few different options to choose from. And now these options are identical for both the Pencil 2 and the Pencil Pro. You can switch between the current tool and the eraser, between current tool and the last used, show the color palette, show ink attributes, or completely turn it off. So that is something that you should definitely take advantage of to make your life a little bit easier. Now the next one is going to be shape recognition or the perfect shape situations. So what's nice about this is that obviously it's very hard to draw a perfect circle, but if I long hold, it'll actually draw that perfect circle and make it for me. Now this works with an abundance of different shapes. You can do obviously a square if you want to, which is easy, the typical triangle, but even things that are a little bit more complicated like a cloud will get fixed to make a perfect cloud or even a star. For instance, I even believe a speech bubble is something that can be perfected. So you can see that's a speech bubble. You can write in there. 
you know, you can do things like pentagons apparently or hexagons and it'll try to fix it perfectly. So there I turned it into a pentagon, even though I was drawing a hexagon. But this is very useful, especially when drawing straight lines. So it'll straighten that line for you, but then also drawing curved arrows, it'll turn it into an arrow or like I said, a straight arrow, which is cool to see. So being able to use that to your advantage, especially when annotating anything is a nice little positive. And another feature, or more so a tool that is very underused and underrated, is going to be the ruler tool. I love this tool, and I don't know why people don't talk about it more, because it works just like any other ruler. So first, it gives you the degrees in terms of what you're turning in real time, and it snaps on zero, it snaps on 90, and of course it'll snap at 180 as well, even though it goes back down to zero. But then also you can use a ruler and draw along it to draw a perfect line as well. And when you remove it, it tells you exactly how long that line was. I wish there was a way to keep that number on there to persist it, but for some reason I can't get it to work. But you can draw lines like this, and it, again, you'll see it kind of magnetize its way over there if you are close to the ruler. For instance, if I go like this and just start doing one of these, it's not going to recognize that. But if I go along the ruler, it will recognize it very easily. So the ruler is a tool that's very underrated in my opinion. The next one is going to be corner shortcuts with the Apple Pencil. So you have two different options by default. In a typical Apple fashion, there isn't any customizations that can be done. But if I swipe from the bottom left of my Apple Pencil, it's going to bring up my quick note, which I can just use as a regular note. You know, I can start writing down here, say hello, put a little smiley face if I want to. You know, that's my classic. Draw the lines if I wanted to. So it'll still work like a normal note. And of course, you can throw it around, put it wherever you see fit. And you can even add links to it, as you can see here. I have an ESPN link. It'll open up ESPN nice and easy and I'm able to do that. You can even grab this if I want to, drag it into here, and then now I have an image of ESPN, which is great to see, to kind of reference back. And then the other one is gonna be from the bottom right is to take a screenshot. So it's a quick way to take a screenshot, and you can do multiple things with this screenshot, but you do have those two options, and unfortunately, those are the only two options that we have. So if I go into my settings and then go down to still the Apple Pencil, you have the bottom left corner and bottom right corner. You can either do quick note, screenshot or off. And then same thing goes with the bottom right corner. So those are your only options, but they're still great options. And that is a perfect segue into the annotation. So if I go and take this screenshot. So what I like about the screenshot is that the annotation works very similar to the notes application. So if I draw an arrow, it'll fix that arrow for me as if it's a notes application. I can draw a circle if I want to, it'll automatically fix that. And my three fingers still work. So if I want to go backwards, it'll just undo everything that I did earlier, which is nice to see. So I like being able to annotate things in real time. Like for instance, if I got to point out the camera down here and draw an arrow, it'll do that for me and then I can send it off. And you can also do the full page and actually edit that full page as well. So having that at your disposal and then being able to send it, share via AirDrop, email, iMessage is a great thing to have. And the Apple Pencil just makes it that much better. And then one of the more powerful tools in the notes application with the Apple Pencil is going to be the A tool. So if I go across here and find the A tool, so what this allows you to do is start handwriting and then it'll turn that into actual type text. So this is a very useful feature because let's say you do have terrible handwriting, which we'll touch on in a little bit with SmartScribe, but it'll actually turn that into text. So if you do need to refer back and not try to kind of understand your own chicken scratch like myself, it does work probably 99% of the time in terms of the actual word recognition. So and as you can see, it did let's go to the mall. For some reason it capitalized that S, but again, it got it correct, which is awesome to see. And then to continue on with Scribble and all of its functionality, you, you can actually use your Apple Pencil to edit text that you've written down or just any text in general. So if you actually just draw a line straight down in between letters, it's going to give you a space. And then if I squiggle here, it's going to actually delete those letters. And then finally, if you put a line through it, it'll highlight whatever you're looking to do. And then that's how you actually format and use your Apple Pencil as maybe a mouse or a way to format text, edit text and things of that nature. So, so the Apple Pencil is a powerful tool. Imagine this kind of with a lot more text and being able to edit paragraphs and essays on the fly with just your Apple Pencil and scribbling things out and adding spaces and things of that nature. So another cool one is going to be in the mail application. And now this is only going to work in the native mail app with your Apple Pencil in the Apple Mail app. But you can basically draw in an email whatever you want to then be sent off as an actual image to that recipient. So you're going to open up a new mail. It's going to show up the keyboard. And then on the top of the keyboard, you get all these different tools you can choose from. And then you're going to press this one right here. And then you're going to see that there's a brand new canvas. Now, if I actually draw a smiley face, put a circle there, maybe put a square here, and then point to the smiley face with an arrow. So you see here that all the things that I mentioned earlier about being able to create perfect shapes and perfect arrows still applies when drawing on there. Then you press done. We're going to insert the drawing and then you can see that in the actual email itself, the drawing will appear and it's going to appear like an image. And you can actually just delete that with one press right there. So this is a nice, powerful tool that you're able to use inside the mail application, as well as a bunch of other ones right here. But that's a video for another time when I focus on the mail application on iPadOS 18. 
So now the next section of the Apple Pencil demos that we're gonna do are gonna revolve around iPadOS 18 as well as the Apple Pencil Pro specifically. So for some of these, I'm gonna talk about the squeeze functionality and I'm also gonna talk about things like math notes and some of the things that you get with iPadOS 18. So the first we're gonna briefly talk about is going to be math notes, which I've mentioned in the past. This is an iPadOS 18 feature. So basically if you hand draw an equation, so two plus two equals, it's gonna take a second, but eventually it's gonna ask if you wanna solve it and then it'll solve it in real time. And then you can even dynamically change it. So if I wanna multiply this by 10, it'll multiply by 10 sh should, and then I get that 40 and it's gonna keep your same handwriting. So this will also work for some graphing equations. So if I do Y equals X plus four, it should graph it once it recognizes what's going on. We're gonna insert the graph and then it'll insert the graph there in real time and you can actually manipulate it and do whatever you want with it. Again, it's a beautiful power of math notes and this is restricted to iPadOS 18, but if you have an Apple Pencil 2 or even an Apple Pencil Gen 1 or an Apple Pencil USB-C, it'll still work as long as you're using an iPad that has iPadOS 18. And in the future, we're gonna do a whole video on math notes, but I just wanted to give you an idea of what can be done here. Another iPadOS 18 exclusive is going to be SmartScribe. So you might've noticed that as I've been handwriting some of these demos, if I actually handwrite it in my handwriting, it's going to change it so it's a little bit more legible. So if you give it a second, it should change it. So as you saw, it actually changed in real time. And, and basically what's happening is that Apple's trying to keep your same essence of your personal handwriting, but make it a little bit more legible. So if you are sharing this with somebody in this handwritten form, it's easier to read. And this works especially great when you are collaborating on notes applications with different people. So keep that in mind. This is going to be for anybody with iPadOS 18. It's not limited to the M4 iPad Pro or limited to the Apple Pencil Pro. And SmartScribe will work outside of the application. So if I take a screenshot and I'm annotating here and I type in what something like this, it's going to fix that handwriting as well as you saw right there. So, so as of right now, those are the two instances that it works on with iPadOS 18. It doesn't work during free form and things like that, but I'm sure it will as it gets later on in time. And now three quick features to round off this video that have to do with the Pencils Pro specifically. The first one is gonna be the squeeze functionality. So by default, if you squeeze, it's going to bring up the actual new palette and the tools. And I love this because it really reduces the friction and the time spent when writing something down. So for instance, if I'm writing or drawing a circle and doing a smiley face and I wanna change the color, I can just squeeze, tap on here, go to red, and then draw the body of this stick figure character as opposed to with a normal Apple Pencil going on here, having to pick the color, then moving this out of the way so it gets out of the way, maybe making it smaller and things like that. It just adds less friction when using the Apple Pencil Pro. And also the haptics on the Apple Pencil Pro are second to none. I have not felt anything else like this. And again, for $130 to each their own in terms of if you think this is worth it or not, but I will say that Apple Pencil 2 alternatives exist on Amazon. You can get 95% of the experience of the Apple Pencil 2 for about $20 nowadays, but I'm yet to find a third party manufacturer that makes the Apple Pencil Pro and gives you that same type of feeling. So this right now is the only way to get real good haptics and get that squeeze functionality. And the squeeze functionality doesn't end with just that quick tool set. If you go into your Apple Pencil settings, go into the actual squeeze functionality, you can turn this into a shortcut and you can map it to whatever you want. So if I tap on the squeeze, it'll actually take me to LumaFusion wherever I am in the OS and then I can just go back to it and change that shortcut to whatever I want. So you do have a bunch of other options here like I mentioned, but the shortcut one is one of the more powerful ones and you can change it to whatever shortcut you see fit that you have already built into your system. And the final piece that I will mention is gonna be Find My Support. That's a big one when it comes to the Apple Pencil. I've lost probably one or two Apple Pencil 2s since 2018 when it originally came out. But those are all the things that I wanted to share when it came to iPadOS and the Notes application alongside the Apple Pencil. Now let's finish up this video. So that was just about do for this video, everybody. Like you saw, the Apple Pencil continues to grow from a feature set standpoint and now from even a hardware standpoint with the Apple Pencil Pro. Now I'm not gonna say that you absolutely need the Apple Pencil Pro, especially because it only works with the M4 iPad Pro and the new M2 iPad Air, but the Apple Pencil 2 gives you 90% of the experience aside from the squeeze and the haptics. And for most people, that's gonna be more than enough depending on what iPad and what your use cases are. But hopefully you did learn something new and leave a comment down below if any of these tips and tricks and features are something that you're gonna add to your arsenal when it comes to using your Apple Pencil because I use my Apple Pencil on a daily basis and when people ask me if they can only choose one accessory for the iPad Pro, I usually say the Apple Pencil, especially if you have an M4 iPad Pro and you have the ability to get the Pencil Pro because you just get a lot of bang for your buck and it's so well made and works so well alongside that awesome iPad. But that'll do it everybody. If you guys did make it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end. And if you guys like this video, be sure to check out one of these videos right here. YouTube thinks you're gonna like this one up here and I think you're gonna enjoy the one right underneath. That'll do it everybody. I'm Fernando, peace.